fortunate one. Part, Part two. two. The Christmas episode. Episode 19. 92. <laughs> I'm Sheila, <laughs> also known as Sheila D. 37, and we got the case of the giggles. I'm, I'm Wendy, also known as Penny Wendy. <laughs> Today, Sheila is appearing as the angry elf. <laughs> Angry. <laughs> and on the Christmas tree. This is my Christmas tree hat. We're wearing this in honor of um, Knit Pearl Girl, who wanted everyone to wear funny um, Christmas hat. sweaters, and oh. I said we would wear hats because yeah, we what don't we did do last Christmas year. sweaters. I don't have any Christmas. I don't sweaters. know why my hat is so off center, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's totally awesome. It looks just like a tree. Um, this is the last week for. The holiday knit along. We'll close the thread on the 31st and we'll draw prizes the week following. Yeah, Because we'll, this is our last episode of the year. Yeah, we'll be back in 2013. God We're willing. taking the week off. <laughs> God willing. The world the did end not end the today. World, as we know it, and well, I feel okay. fine. <laughs> Technically, the world did not end today Yet. so far. <laughs> we still have 12 more hours that it could end. <laughs> but, like, I just, I'm, you know. I got things to do. I need to know if I need to get this stuff done or if oh, I can just yeah. put it off and never do it. Never so. have to worry about yeah. it. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed in the apocalypse. It's I'm really, okay with that. It's not as exciting as I thought it would well, be. Well, it's funny. We were going to bed last night, and I said to my husband, I said, well, we just renewed Zachary's medication. We got three months for him Because <laughs> that's really my fear. I know. If the world was to end, is him not having his meds. Well, the good news is so far the world is still here. Also, um, if, it, if it wasn't going to end and we're just going to move into a new era of awareness, do you? I've like I've been asking everybody, do you feel more like aware? aware? Like, are we on some kind of a new plane of existence? And I have to say, for me, same old, same old. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, for the end of the world, the weather kind of fits in our area. It's well, kind of gray and gloomy. It's and been windy. Windy. And... Maybe like. The winds are going to blow everything down. Winds are going to change. <laughs> it's a change. Winds are change. The winds have changed. All right. So now on I'm that stopping. note. Um, so, yeah, uh, the holiday knit along ends next week. We're still doing the Carrie Steinmetz knit, knit Pearl Girl knit along to the end of January. Um, that's pretty much it. How many members do we even know? 1,110. 1,110? Yeah. Yay. And, um, that's, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> Yes, I agree. Thank you for joining our group, because that's kind of amazing. It is kind of amazing. And it makes me feel happy. Yeah. So, um, that's all. That's all. We Neither one of us have shown up. No. we. I, I did write a list of our usual topics so that I could remember what a was A little next. outline. I'm just going to check off the ones that we've done. Certainly. All right. On the dance card, um, I'm going first this week. First thing I'm going to show you is a little baddie. This poor little shawl is... is struggling. I did a lot more on it. It's hard to tell because it looks the same every week. Again, I'm in the middle of a row. This is my personal design and it is knit out of Blue Moon Fiber Art Socks That Rock Lightweight in the Rookie colorway. And it is a chevron lace type pattern. And um, I am very close to knitting the edging on. I ordered a, a, a new stitch book I'm really excited about and I think I'm going to hold off on finalizing the edging until I take a look at it to see if it inspires me to oh, do right. something different. I have a significant amount of yarn left still, so I might even have enough to do another repeat of the lace. Not sure. Um, but I knit this, I knit a whole repeat, and then I had to rip it all back because I made a mistake somewhere. So then I knit it again, and I had to rip it back again. Not all the way, but part of the way, because I made another mistake on my own design <laughs> that I wrote the pattern for. I can't follow my own instructions. That's not a good sign. And I've already knit like this much of it. It's not like it was my first go. So I don't know. I, I finally had to put it in timeout. It needs to be ripped back to it. I have one stitch less than I'm supposed to. I must have not done an increase on the you edging. You can't fudge it somewhere? Yeah, it's the sample. I want it to I look know. nice. I know. Well, then you do the sample, then you give it out to test knitters <laughs> and let them do nice. <laughs> so, anyway, it's in my little geisha bag from Knitting's My Bag. And um, it will be coming to a pattern store near you, near you someday. <laughs> someday. If I ever get anything so. done. 
I have been so busy. The second thing on the needles is new um, because I finished a project this week. Let's see if I can find a picture of it. Something tells me that, okay, it's called Suki by Miriam Pike, and it was gifted to me, and I didn't write the name of the person who gifted it to me. And my husband is going to be meeting with his boss right now, just so you know. <laughs> um, it's a two-color textured shawl design, and I think um, Yarn Harlot made one. I don't cool. remember. I, um, I, I'm pretty sure Yarn Harlot made one on her blog. I think when I saw it, I like sheepled over to a Ravelry oh. and put it in my queue because it was really pretty. Um, yes, this was gifted to me, and I didn't write down who gave it to me, but whoever you are, thank you. And I cast it on in two colors of Dream and Color Smooshy. Forgot um, you still had Dream and Color Smooshy. You haven't knit with I that in a while. So I know, much. but you haven't knit with that in a long time. I know because I hoarded up. But, um, so this is the top part. It's in, um, Midnight Derby, which is just a plain, let's see if I can get it to show up better. It's not that bright. It's a dark navy blue. It's beautiful. And then, um, there's a green, and I'm thinking this was a limited edition colorway for, like, St. Patrick's Day or something. I don't know. I have to look in my queue. Do you have a sweater with that Midnight Derby? No. I have a sweater out of... Another one that's similar, but has purple in it. <laughs> Actually, this could be that purple stuff. I'm not 100% sure because I didn't put the labels with these. But this is what the green looks it's like. Gorgeous. It's just really beautiful. It goes from very dark to light. So those two colors together. I love green and blue together. Very collegiate. Very, my... very preppy. Yeah. You know, it's, and so I've only done like a teeny, I think, three rows of the green. But this is a really relaxing, fun pattern, and I'm putting it in my holiday bag to go with the holiday season, my little gnomey bag. I should put one of my new gnome stitch markers on this project. You should. Right now I have one that I got from Diabolical Yarn with my um, caucus race oh, yeah. um, thing. This bell's going to annoy the heck out of so, me. Um, that's it. I have actively on the needles. I still have two pairs of socks on the needles, one that I'm supposed to do the video for eventually. What other pair of socks do you have on the needles? The stripey ones from my um, Play It Life Saki Maki, <laughs> which I think I'm going to turn into my car knitting ever since the car knitting emergency I had last Saturday. You Did you know about that? that? No. Oh my gosh. So my daughter sees a cognitive behavioral therapist like once a month mm -hmm. um, for anxiety. And I take her to the doctor's office. And so I, I can't remember why this happened, but somehow I managed to get out of the house and over to the doctor's office, and I didn't bring any knitting. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is going to stink. You didn't so have a book to read? Or... I, had, I had my iPhone. That was it. So I get up to the office. She goes into the appointment because I don't go in the appointment with her. They didn't have a TV in the lobby like they do at most places. It was a Saturday, so... There was no um, secretary there, so they if they do normally have a TV, it wouldn't have been on anyway. They didn't even have magazines. I was like, oh my God, all they had was a couple of those um, children's magazines. Like highlights. Highlights whatever. magazines at, that were pretty badly beaten up. And um, so I, it was a... I, but you I, didn't have a book on your iPhone? You I did. I ended or... up reading a book on my iPhone, but it's not as good as knitting. No, well... <laughs> it's better than nothing. Yeah. But I did tweet that I was having a, a um, alert level red knitting emergency. And that people like... were like, you should keep a knitting project in your car. And well, I'm like, I so should. That Why was like don't me I? overnight one time. I had nothing. <laughs> didn't you use... Wasn't there one time when you use the office supplies to knit? Stitch markers, no, <laughs> stitch markers, but... Oh my gosh, it was bad, and it, it was only 45 minutes, but it felt like an hour. So, um, it felt like an hour, that's only 15 minutes longer than 45 minutes. It felt like a really long time to me. So I think I'm going to put the Play It Life sock in my car because it's I'm just making it up as I go so it doesn't have a pattern. No, but it's probably not a bad idea for me to do that blue moon that in my car too just to have it there. Just know. have it there. Lately, I've been carrying um, Zachary's iPod with me everywhere to read. 
I love it. reading off of my iPhone. I actually enjoy reading off of the iPod. It's nice it's, because it's tiny. Yeah, you can just hold and it. And it's about the same, the words are about the same size as a book. And the best part is when I go to bed at night, if it's my husband wants to sleep, I can turn it on because it's backlit so I can read in the dark. I do it all the time. Oh, I do it all the time, too, only because our light switches That's across why the room. That's why my goal is to someday get an iPod, iPad mini, because that would be the size of a Kindle, Yeah. but it would be an iPad. It's about the, it's, it's about the size of this and a little taller. Yeah. Ooh. I want that. <laughs> well, I didn't want to oh. show. That's our I address. I just didn't want to show. Our address so it's about public. up to here. I know. But um, I know I was holding an iPad mini, and I'm like, ooh. I know, I kind of want one. That's all right. So, someday, someday, if we're lucky. What are you doing, Mom? Putting laundry away. <laughs> you, you looked guilty. <laughs> she was like... So, is it my yeah. turn while I have I Yeah, I, that's all I have on the needles, the socks. I'm not going to bother to show you because you've seen them a million times. <laughs> um, I'm still working on the clap of tea. I can't even remember who by... Kate Gilbert. Kate Gilbert. <laughs> I have maybe done a couple of rows since I last saw you last week, but you're getting to see the gradation or whatever you want to call it. I just want to make sure I didn't lose a stitch. A little bit more, but you got to kind of squish it up to see it. It's pretty. It is pretty. Right now I'm in, a, I'm in a dark brown, and I think it's going to turn to a burgundy soon. Cool. Like mahogany is probably a better oh, way it of looks, it. Yeah, it's pretty. So those are the colors that it's going to be in. We don't have good Our lighting. lighting for, it's it's so yeah. That all looks like today. the same. That all looks like the same. But there is some variance it's like a deep in there. Burgundy color. Yeah. So um, I am on repeat five of the increase. No, repeat six. And I may stop. You're supposed to stop on uh, line six after you get the repeat you want. Mm -hmm. I may stop at line six and double check my weight and then do the straight section so hopefully by the next time we meet that you know two weeks maybe it will be done <laughs> i hope so i hope so too um but yeah so i really enjoy it. it's really a, it's not a bad knit i just i'm crazy I'm well making this excuses. is a busy time of year i'm making excuses too i, I just haven't are. been my knitting mojo is there but not well, Gung -ho. in between all of your many jobs, it's hard to have more chill. Well, <laughs> you know what it is? It's easier to read than it is to knit. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> that is true. Not that I don't enjoy knitting. I do, but... Is that all you have on the needles? I have a sock that I haven't worked on in months. Weeks. Did you bring it with you? No. So she has a sock on, like me. We have socks on the needles that we're not going to show you, so you just have to believe us. Yeah, no, us. I still, I think I'll if just... this is your first time tuning in. We're sorry. We're sorry we didn't show those projects. Um, I may bring that to Christmas knitting. No, I'll probably bring those because this is my list now. Yeah. But my, oh, side note. I'm going to go off on a tangent here. Um, my future sister-in-law, she knits. Right. She's been knitting probably more frequently than I have lately. This bell's going to drive me insane. It's driving me insane. <laughs> Uh, there, thank you. Um, <laughs> now you look like a thug elf. <laughs> I can look like cousin An it elf again. Gang. I can yes. look like cousin it again. <laughs> um, anyways, I guess her ex mother in law, the girl's taught, uh, grandmother, taught them how to knit. Yeah. And she's been doing that back and forth, which is fine. But I guess she sent them home with you know a big skein. Yeah. But didn't roll it up in a ball and with kids it just kind of got everywhere so she uh -huh. had to roll it up in a ball and I'm like oh so uh it'll be fun to go Christmas day with a bunch of us knitting hopefully yeah that that sounds awesome yeah <clears throat> cat just jumped into the laundry basket hi hi Ollie he looks very excited so um is that it for on the needles that's it on the dance I'm card I'm boring rate Sorry. your date I have a date to rate I got nothing, so I'll just, you know, I have been it finishing in. projects like there's no tomorrow. And, she um, there wouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> in case you didn't hear that, my mom just said, I've been finishing projects like there's no tomorrow. No tomorrow. She said, because you thought there, there wouldn't, wouldn't be. be. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I finally <clears throat> finished Shetland Triangle, and it's huge. 
pretty too. I don't know if you can see how big it is. I will try to. Got caught on the tree. <laughs> it's really big. It's big. It's backwards. It's backwards. I don't know. I got <clears> caught <throat> on the tree. Oh, I'm like what tree? Oh yeah. The tree on my head. My head tree. What's that? Oh, it's your mom making noise. Yeah, I know. So it's nice and big. I haven't woven the ends in yet, obviously. Um, came out really nice. <sighs> that freaking phone alarm. All right. Um, yeah, I did this. I finished it this weekend, and I did it out of Great Adirondack Lolita Base in the Antique Colorway. And I did it much larger than the um, pattern called for. What's the pattern call for? How many repeats? Like up to here, right? It's small. It's like up to here. Yeah. It's, it's a much just... smaller thing. I like a much deeper shawl. I think it's really pretty. It's a nice um, drapey, lightweight. And you could bunch it around your neck to do a um, mm. to do it like this for the winter. You can wear it as a shawl. It's definitely big enough to talk. I like to wear my shawls when I'm out and about. I like to wear my shawl tied in the back like this. Yeah. Like a, what do you call those things? Like a um, shrug. shrug. And it's definitely long enough to do that. Um, I'll put on my pattern page how many repeats I did because I did way more than I just did it until <clears throat> you were sick of it until I was sick of it. And I have so much yarn left. I could do another one the same size. I know. Probably. Probably even bigger. Um, yeah, but again, I love I love this shawl. I think this is a really good beginner's lace shawl because it's it's really the same row yeah, most it, of the time. It was an easy shawl to knit. I remember doing that with my uh, Cascade Eagle. Yes. And it looks really good in it worsted weight. It looks really weight. nice in, in heavier weights, too. And the great thing about it is you can make it as small or as big as you want yeah. um, because the edging will work as long as you've completed the, the chart, yeah. like the chart. So you could have a hundred repeats or 10 repeats. You can still knit the chart that on. That wouldn't look bad in uh, like a striping, not a striping, but like a gradient or a stripe type. Like if you wanted to do contrasting or like blues. Yeah, it would look pretty in almost anything. Yeah. And it's a really easy thing. It's the Shetland Shawl by Evelyn Clark. Yes. And I got it out of the book. Wrap style. Wrap style from that, Interweave. Can, you, you could probably buy it by itself. You can. But. I believe you can get the pattern by itself now from Interweave. Um, but I really like it. It's it's my go-to lace pattern. It has a really simple edging. Just a simple scalloped edge. Um, it's very nice. So, yeah. that was. I give that a two thumbs up. This is the second one that I've done because, as those of you who have watched earlier shows know... My female cat licked the old first one that I did until it was felted in about 20 places. Yeah, you could probably toss that one now. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, I had I kept it to see how big. I, no, I know. This one is even bigger than that I one because I knit way beyond that level. Um, so I'm glad it's done because um, it was getting kind of boring to knit. And it was really funny. Um, I had pulled it out to work on it this weekend and... I counted and I was like, I only really need to do one more repeat. And it, it only took me like an hour more of knitting and I was done with it. And I'm like, I could have finished this weeks ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just never got around to it. So, yeah. Shetland Triangle. Highly recommend it. Two thumbs up. Um, do you have a date to rate? No. I have a Whirlwind Romance. I showed you before that I did two of these skeins. This is my Diabolical Yarns. Um in the flower shop inferno colorway <laughs> i was gonna call it atomic, atomic flower, flower pot. pot i can't make that mistake now because she made an atomic flower pot colorway after basically me and some because other people that watched the show <laughs> told her she needed to make it and it's a really pretty colorway too so check it out on diabolical yarns i have these two skeins done which i showed you last week i have a third skein ready to be plied on the okay. bottoms because I went to Spinning Guild last night and I finished um, two bobbins full so a little over two ounces I spun last night so that was that was fun and I got to hang out with my friends from the Spinning Guild we meet once a month 
and um, it was a lot of fun. I actually Julia Farwell Clay, who designed Skipper D sweater, was there, so oh, she nice. got to see the sweater in person. And um, I talked to her because I might do party mix, which is her design in Nitty. And I talked to her about spinning for Hero, H-I-R-O, the pattern that she gave me last week, which um, I think it would be kind of cool to spin for. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about, you know, how it would need to be four colors that were pretty Close tone together. on tone. Well, you don't want to have anything too heavy. Like, this would not really work for Hero. Right. <laughs> you need to have more semi-solid, I think. And, and I was thinking, you know... You wouldn't need a lot to do that, so I'm kind of, it's percolating in the back of my brain. But she's a really great designer, and as you know, that Skipperty sweater, I have worn it nonstop because I love it so much. It fits so well. Sorry, that's my text. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, what is this now? Yeah, all right, I just wanted to make sure I didn't, I'm waiting for a phone call. Well, it's not that important. It's for my, it's my tweet. Did you tweet something? Not you. Oh, no, my uncle. Oh, okay. I was going to say, did somebody tweet us both? No. All right, so um, that's it for um, my whirlwind romance. Um, I've done three skeins, and so I have probably five more to do. Four or five oh, okay. more. Four or five more skeins to do. No, three or four more skeins. There we go. I should get about seven skeins. Oh, okay. I don't know if that's going to be enough to knit the sweater, but it's definitely enough to knit party mix because I can spin a different color Part, that right. coordinates for the sleeves. If you look at the design in, in the recent knitty, you'll see what I'm talking about. And um, I'll just tell you right now, segueing into future dates, that's my future date, is going to be either a, a plain top-down pullover sweater using Elizabeth Zimmerman's formulas or party mix if I don't have enough of this to knit a whole sweater. So, that's that. Future dates. Um, yeah, I'm not even looking into that right now. Um, I still want some slippers, but I have a feeling I'm going to be getting them for Christmas. Yeah. Now, it's funny. Uh, we went shopping on Saturday, another side note, because I have no things to show, so I might as well talk. <laughs> went shopping Saturday for Christmas things. I took the boys to get something for their dad and something for each other. Yeah. And then Cam took them to get something for me. And um, I had mentioned to Max that I wouldn't mind slippers or a cookie jar. But yeah. cookie jars are kind of out of their price range. We're looking at the $10 price range. Right. And so I think he was getting me a pair of slippers. Well, I was seeing him look at the um, leopard print. Yeah. My husband doesn't like leopard print because my father's ex-wife wore a ton of leopard print. Like every time we saw her, she was in leopard print. So he's like, yeah, that." No, I don't like leopard print. Just whatever you do, do not buy anything leopard print. That's so, so weird. I, it, it is weird. I don't know why he gets like that, but I can see. So every time I look at leopard print, I kind of chuckle now. Yeah. So I don't know if he talked Max out of it or not, but I should be leopard hopefully print. getting some slippers. So I may... Oh, <laughs> my mom has leopard um, print shoes. Don't let Cam see those. Um, I may be putting leopard, uh, yeah, leopard print um, slippers on the back burner until next year. Leopard print slippers? Yeah. yeah. I don't see me knitting leopard print slippers. I don't either. But, um... I don't even know. That would be a lot of intarsia, wouldn't it? Maybe not. Maybe no. if you made the spots close enough but together. But the, the way the pattern works, it's short rows. I don't know how you could do that, because you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You could do it. It just would look weird. Yeah. Because I was thinking, if there was a way I could do Hello Kitty on those... I but I'm, really I'm, not, cool. I'm not sure if there is a way. But, there um, probably is a way, but it's fiddly. <laughs> yeah, I am so not a fiddly person. <laughs> but uh, I have thought about that I may start doing... We had talked about... Okay, here's a way. We were talking last week about possibly doing our next knit along as washcloths, dishcloths, mm -hmm. whatever. So I was thinking as I was making a ton of fudge last night for the teacher gifts... <laughs> <laughs> that I may start knitting at least a washcloth. Did you use your month. secret recipe fudge? I yes, use your secret fudge recipe. I never said it was a secret fudge recipe. I call it that. Uh, it's on the back of a fluff jar. It's the no-fail fudge from five fluff. pounds makes, of fudge. It makes good fudge. When you when you get the big jar, 
And if people out west don't know what fluff is, it's understandable. You can't get it out there. Because fluff is like a, it was created in Massachusetts. Yeah, my brother, when he lived in Arizona, could never get fluff. It's I, marshmallow it fluff. It's like it's, a white, it's, it's like white melted sugar. marshmallows. I don't know. Whatever marshmallows, it's a, like marshmallow cream. If, yeah, if you need the, actually Carnation has a recipe too that just uses marshmallows. And chocolate it's the same idea because I use carnation evaporated milk for it but I was thinking this morning I'm like instead of well I always do fudge anyways but you know next year I can actually throw in maybe a, a Christmas dish cloth because I have a ton of Christmas yarn oh yeah so I may those are easy enough that I could do like one a week or maybe one every couple of weeks yeah you started so, in January yeah sure <laughs> might actually finish at least one by next <laughs> So, yes, yeah, I call every, every time somebody compliments my fudge, I say it's Sheila's secret fudge recipe, <laughs> which is the no fail fudge from Fluff. I, because I was afraid to try fudge, and Sheila's like, no, it's really easy. Just do the no fail fudge. They call it that because it never no fails, fails right? and it doesn't. It's I think I might fudge. have even actually overcooked mine last week, uh, last night, but you can't really, once you add chocolate, you, it just adds yeah. like a nice caramel taste. I down. tell you, one way that it can be ruined is if you leave it out without putting it into something, it can turn like a little white. Crystallish. Um, yeah, but it still tastes good. It's just still perfectly fine. <laughs> That's what happened. I went to get the um, Tupperware containers out of the cabinet, and there were there only were lids. I said to my husband, what happened to all the containers? He doesn't know. So I had to leave it overnight, and it got little white uh, edges. But it still tastes good. Nobody's um, going to complain. With my fudge, what I did yesterday is um, I couldn't find – I put mine in the little loaf pans. Mm -hmm. For the teachers and wrap them up in saran wrap. I only found one set of five. Usually I do like I think two sets of fives. I ended up putting them in cupcake pans with little paper cupcakes. Oh, that was a good idea. Yeah, so now I have little like smidgen where you could probably get four servings out of it. And I got a ton of them. I got so I did five little loaf pans, twelve. Sorry, 18 cupcakes. I had to think about it. <laughs> then I lined tin foil in a regular bread pan and got inch, inch and a half thick of fudge in that. <laughs> I'm like, holy cow. Next time I think I might just do the half batch. But yeah, because that's a lot of fudge. It is a lot of fudge. I usually buy the small jar, and yeah, that yeah. makes a good... That makes us... I mean, that fudge is rich, so... It is rich. It's I not mean. like you can eat a lot in one sitting. Plus, we also had chocolate cake, because... It was my son's birthday yesterday. Yay. And How old is he now? Twelve. Oh my god. One goodness. more year until he's an official teenager. So we his we gave him an option. We give the kids an option whether they want to go out for dinner or I make their favorites. Because they're at that age where they have favorites. Yeah. Max wanted me to make steak, mashed potatoes, and carrots. So that's what I did. Actually I didn't grill the steak, Cam grilled the steak. All but, American and, boy. Mixes oh, big time. Potatoes. <laughs> Where um, Zachary is completely opposite. He's a sushi, rice, yeah, stir fry is, kid. He's totally Asian. He's totally Asian, his father. Asian palate. Um, so he also asked for chocolate cake. The last couple of years, I have made chocolate cake from scratch. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen this year. It was uh, Pillsbury <laughs> moist. It was good. And this morning, I noticed somebody dug in with their fingers. I bet, a couple it, of, I bet it was the Z-Man. Oh, I'm sure it was, because there were a couple of corners that you could just see somebody was trying to grab. Like, Max would at least try and shave off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of funny. So, yeah, we, we're full of chocolate in our house right now. Yeah, well, that's my moving on to crushes and heartbreaks. <laughs> Sorry. You can count that as part of my crush and heartbreak. M moving on to crushes and heartbreaks. I had a real rough baking week. And the back story is that every year my husband gives everyone that works in his office a baked good gift. Which you which have to Which I make. bake. <laughs> I've always done it. Even when I was working full time as an attorney, I always made this baked good gift for the office. And over the years, because he's worked with a lot of the same people... There, there are it. requests. <laughs> like, can you make this again? And, no. you know. So I, you know, I tried to do like, it. You get what you get, buddy. So I try to do it a couple of weeks before we're going to give the gifts just because it's a lot of baking. Um, and I, this year, I, my, my crush is that it's finally done. The bags went in yesterday. Okay. It's over with. My heartbreak is first I made two batches of fudge and one, they got like the little white 
crystals. crystals on it because I didn't have anything to put them in. So then I went out to the store and I bought some big storage things, which I'm going to cleverly put in the Christmas box so that when I go to do the Christmas cooking they'll next year, yeah, they'll be there and nobody will, my husband, right. nobody, my husband will lose them. So, um, so that idea. was, I was kind of bummed out about that and I did buy some more fluff to make another batch of fudge, but I think we have enough fudge. I don't think I need to make any more. So there was that. Then I made a batch of, what was the next thing that I did? I did the O. Henry bars. You did something with the, the crispy candy? No, the crispy. Oh, candy. then I made the cracker candy. That's what it was. I make cracker candy every year. It's really easy. You lay down um, saltines on a pan. You make some, um, you melt brown sugar and butter together and you pour it over the crackers and then you bake it in the oven for 15 minutes and then you just throw a bag of chocolate chips on the top and spread it out and it melts and it's like this crispy toffee candy. And um, I've made it a million times. <laughs> this year I made this, this the candy stuff, poured it on the crackers and then just dumped the chips on and then was like, <gasps> because I didn't bake it in the oven. And I was like, I don't know if that's going to be bad or not. So I made a second batch, the giveaway batch, and I somehow burned the candy. Not a lot, but enough so that I thought it tasted funny. So I had to make a third oh, batch geez. of it, which was normal. And that's the batch that we gave away to his, because cracker candy is the number one favorite thing, so it has to taste good. My parents say that they don't mind the burned stuff, but I think it tastes like chemicals, so they can eat it. The stuff, what I learned from this experience is that if you don't bake the cracker candy in the oven before you put the chocolate on, you can taste more of the cracker. It's really crispy, so it's kind of yummy. But instead of being more toffee-like and easy to chew, it's like caramel. Oh. Which can be good, but it sticks to your teeth like there is no tomorrow. Like taking a filling out. I'll let you try some after we record so that you can see... <laughs> Fortunately, you know, it's still edible, but that was the point. So I was really mad at myself. Then I made a batch of these O. Henry bars, which is oatmeal, a oatmeal mixture crust, and then you put um, chocolate and peanut butter on the top. They're really good. And I did the first one, and I realized I forgot to put vanilla into the crust. Oh, my gosh. So I was like, God, man. So I made another batch. Baking fail for you I, this the, Like the whole time. So I made another batch, <laughs> and and they were fine. And then I went to make Christmas cookies. I make, um, I have a Betty Crocker cookie book that's from the 1960s, and they did a reprint. My husband had it when he was a, a, a child, and when they did the reprint with the old-fashioned 60s cover, oh, I okay. bought it for him because it's kind of a nostalgia thing. And they have a really good cookie recipe in there. But the problem is there are, like, two recipes side by side on the page, and they're both for sugar cookies. And so as I'm doing the sugar cookies, I was reading the right recipe, and then when I came to put in baking powder, I read the wrong recipe, and I put in baking soda. And I didn't realize until the dough was, like, in a ball and in the refrigerator, and I was like, oh, my God, like, I don't even know what that could do. Baking powder makes things rise. Baking soda isn't baking powder. So I went on the Internet, and apparently if I had also added cream of tartar mm. with it it would have been the same as baking powder but I didn't know that and it was too late so I was like oh I'm not even gonna bake anything more today so um the next day I I was just gonna throw it out and then I thought you know what I'm just gonna bake like a sample I'll make two cookies just pat out circles and see what happens they were perfectly fine mm. <laughs> so if you're making that particular recipe and you accidentally use baking soda no big deal Maybe it was a small enough amount that it didn't... I, I know, or maybe because it sat overnight in the refrigerator. I don't know. For whatever reason, it worked out. So that was a potential baking fail. Then I made sausage balls with cheese, and um, those went really well because it's almost impossible. But in the middle of one batch, I realized I didn't have enough Bisquick, and I had to go get more Bisquick. Like, in the middle of the batch. Everything was in the bowl. Um... And I think, then I was done. My husband said he would do the um, cheese straws that we usually do because I was seriously done. I don't, I screwed up like half of the baking yeah. that I did. Like I was on some kind of, it was baking fail week. So my heartbreak is, I, I'm like, I seriously was starting to worry. Like, am I getting Alzheimer's? Like what is going on with me? 
Although it wasn't really memory so much. It's like I was distracted. Like I wasn't paying attention, which is why I don't normally cook. Because I can't focus on it long enough and things burn and they don't get mixed in right. And apparently now it's affecting my baking. Yeah, but I think cooking as in meals is more forgivable than baking. Baking is a, a cut and dry type of thing. I know. That's why yeah. I like it. You put everything in a bowl, mix it up, put it in the oven. Easy. Yeah, cooking is not like that. I've learned that over the last few years that cooking is definitely more flexible and uh, compared to baking. Ugh, well, so yeah, it was tough, but the gift bags got done. They went out, and now the only baking, I'm going to make another recipe of sausage balls, which are really easy. If you want to make great sausage balls, a pound of Jimmy Dean sausage, a pound of sharp cheddar, four cups of Bisquick. Three cups? I used four. They still tasted good. <laughs> and you bake them in the oven for 15 minutes. At I'm assuming you shape them into balls? Yeah, you roll them into balls. And they are... And if you get the Jimmy Dean hot sausage, even better. How hot is hot? It's just a little spicy. It's not like... Because I think I'm doing appetizers for my brother this Those year. Those are really good. They're, and we'll they take to, literally... It, we'll you put everything afterwards. in a big bowl, and you just mush it together with your hands until it's all together, and then you roll it into balls. And they don't spread out, so you can put like 50 balls on a right. thing, and it's like takes you like half an hour to make them. And they're delicious. Take Tasty. the recipe down now. Yeah, my, apparently my mom, I swear she told me four cups of this quick. Another baking fail. Who knew? <laughs> I can't do anything right this Christmas. But I still have to make one more recipe of those, and I'm going to make another batch of sugar cookies because we gave a lot of them away. Yeah, I'm cheating with bag. my sugar cookies. I have a log of Pillsbury. <laughs> I love making refrigerator rolled out cookies. I don't mind I do. it. It's just um No, I've I've used the I've used the I'll make, berry before. I'll make other cookies, but sugar cookies is just I do it once a year. Actually yeah. I did it for Thanksgiving because we had IKEA cookie cutters that were super cute. Well we um my husband for Christmas one year gave me pans that you can put molds. So mm -hmm. I think what I'm gonna do is spray those or grease them up and mold the sugar cookies into them and see how they come out. That'll probably be good. Yeah. I so. did buy chocolate uh, morsels to do the peanut butter cookies. Mm -hmm. Not morsels, the uh, Hershey Kisses. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have enough to do cookies anymore because when I went to bake the cookies, I had no eggs because my husband had boiled them all. So oh. I'm like, I can't make the cookies, but we've been eating the Hershey Kisses. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I made two good. batches of those, too. I forgot. Those did not have any kind of an incident. Yeah, again, that's a it's hard. It's hard to ruin those. <laughs> peanut butter. Oh, I made mine from scratch. Well, no, my husband had bought the peanut butter cookie Dough. stuff I love those. a couple months ago and I just haven't done them yet so um and then my other heartbreak is that my cat uh, Oscar has some kind of an allergic reaction he had to go to the vet this morning to get a cortisone shot his neck is all covered with little tiny bumps poor guy yeah but he'll be fine so but that's it for my crushes and heartbreaks okay uh, my crushes and heartbreaks is my husband's going back to work on Monday <laughs> And that is a a crush. I was going to say heartbreak, and then I'm like, no, No, wait. he's been driving me insane. Uh, we had a little bit of an argument about, um, well, I finished my school. I did my mock interview, which was really easy. She liked how my, I answered my questions. Um, I got a call the next day, Tuesday, because we I was questioning our, our externships, mm -hmm. but they're not going to place anyone until next year in January. So I get this call from someone who said, um, would you be interested in working at a place from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m.? I said, absolutely. She goes, that would be a good deal. It's Braintree Rehab, which means it's Braintree. Yeah. Which is South Shore for us, which is a South good Shore. 40 minutes. I know. We never go there. Oh, well, I used to. My brother used to live down there. But um, it's only, it would only be for an externship, and it would be uh, inpatients. 5 a.m. to 1, that would be perfect for me. So I'm waiting for a phone call. I sent her my resume, and I just looked at the resume, and I did my email wrong. But she shouldn't be emailing me. Hopefully, I'll, I'll send an email to the person who contacted me. Uh, she should be calling me, and I made sure that my cell phone was right. So hopefully, I'll get word on that, because that would start January 7th. And that would be perfect, because I would be home in time for my boys, and that's really the key. Yeah. Um, 
So that would be good. But my husband and I got into a discussion stating that if I was to take this externship, I would be leaving the house about 4 a.m. every morning. That would mean he would have to get up and get off his butt at 6 with the boys. <laughs> and um, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> it's itching my head. I'm sorry. And the bell is just driving me insane because <laughs> I just keep hearing it. You guys may not even hear it, but I hear it. Um, so he would have to get up with the boys every day. And uh, and then I said to him, I said, if I take this, I said, I can still work because I don't get paid for an externship. If I take this, I would still have to work my overnight job so that we have money coming in. It would be Friday and Saturday. I'd have to not get another day. And he goes, well, you can pick up day hours. I'm like, when would I be picking those up? I said, I'm leaving the house by 4 a.m. I get home by 2 with the boys. I said, if I was to even work night, I said, you don't get home until 8, 8.30. When am I supposed to work extra hours? Yeah. Never mind the fact that I have Unless to Unless you think you're else. supposed to work overnight on Friday and then do the morning shift on Saturday, and then work Saturday night. Maybe no, he, no he meant afternoon hours. He just wasn't thinking. And I, I, I yelled at him. I said, you know what? This is ridiculous. So Monday, he has, I got really aggravated at him. Monday was my mock interview. Sunday, I went and got a suit. I invested in a suit because I'm going to need one. And if I don't, if I only use it for one interview and I end up getting that job, that's fine because I have a wedding in March. So, it's, yeah, I, so I'm, I'm going to need it. <clears throat> we found out that we have one in September, too, in California. Maybe I'll just send my husband up for that one. <laughs> um, so I get up at 6, get Max out the door, trying to get ready. I take a shower in between him getting up and Zachary getting up. Get Zachary up, get him started, making lunches and everything, drying my hair while he's getting ready. My husband's sleeping. The whole time? The whole time. I left at, let's see, so I had to be there at 9. I left at 8, and he's still in bed. I'm like, you're a son of a gun. Of course, I didn't say son of a gun. Um, he just has no clue. I know. He has been doing a little bit of laundry lately. We did fix our dryer, hopefully. Actually, <laughs> we found out that nothing was wrong with it. We just really needed... We cleaned out the lint, but apparently there was some other stuff. That there's like a secret area out. where you have to clean yeah, well, it Well, we had to take it apart to clean it up. Yeah, there's a secret area. That's what so, the guy cleaned out on ours when ours didn't work. Um, hopefully that works. I haven't been doing too much laundry. As a matter of fact, I have a load in the wash that needs to be redone. I hate when I do that. Oh. Um, so, yeah, that's my crush and heartbreak. So, fingers crossed that I get this phone call today. Uh, you I may, will get it today. I may send um, my coordinator an email saying, I haven't heard from her. My email address is wrong on my resume. Just by a letter. Fix that. Yeah. Um, but... I wouldn't think she'd email me anyway. But you never know. Well, nowadays. no, she's supposed to be. She was supposed to call me for a phone interview. Oh. So she wouldn't do that over the email. I'm just hoping maybe she's been busy. The hours are till one, so maybe I, I was hoping that maybe today after one she'd call me and when mm -hmm. she had time or something. Right. So I don't know. Keep your fingers crossed, because the sooner I get this externship done, the sooner I can get a job. And to stop whatever. working at night. Yes. And during the day. And taking care of your kids, which, yeah, well. by the way, for anyone who's not counting, is three jobs. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't go there. <laughs> so, anyways, Christmas is coming. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> and that's it for my crushes and heartbreaks, I think. I don't know. Yeah. Bobbles and bling. I got um, one. All I have this week is this pattern. Permanent residency socks. Very pretty. I got this from Sheep Dreamery as a random act of pattern. And I got one of Sheep Dreamery as, yeah, from Sheep Dreamery as well, called the, La Pui. called the Lazy Girl Shawl. I'm having a hard time. My, my tongue is quite lazy lately. And sorry for the, there we go, maybe. And it's really pretty. It's really pretty. It's two colors. It's Lazy Girl Shawl by, oh, sorry, uh, by Megan Peters. And, um, it's knit back and forth by the looks of it with two colors and ruffles. Yeah, it's really pretty. Um, my guess is maybe the ruffles might be short rows. I'm not sure. I haven't read the pattern too much, but it's definitely knit back and forth. Oh, yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah. Um, and let me show this without giving the gauge. It won't be that bad. See? Really pretty. Yeah. So thank you very much. I yes, appreciate thank it. You, and that was uh, for the random act of pattern on Tuesday as well.
I like that random active pattern. It makes me think of Carrie every time. Yep. So that's it for baubles and bling. I can't think of it if I got anything else this week. Oh, no, we did. We got one thing in the Knit One Heart 2 mailbox. Oh, yes. We got, we a, got a card, card from, from Polly Knits. Polly. Polly Knits. Thank you very much, Polly. And he has a podcast, too. Yes, he does. Very good one. So check it out if you haven't already. Meet at noon? Yeah. Would that work? That works for me. All right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we're planning on something. You might want to let um. Yeah, I'll I'll get okay. back to her. So um, um, so that was bobbles, bobbles and bling, bling gossip and, and innuendo. Um, the only thing that's coming up on the horizon is spa in um, Freeport, Maine, and that will be the first week of February, first weekend of February. And like I said on the past shows, they have a small marketplace. But some pretty cool vendors are going to be there. Jessa Lou Bags will be there. Spunky Eclectic Yarns will be there. String Theory Yarns usually there. The Wool and Rabbit. Um, Josette. Enchanted Knoll Farms. Mm -hmm. um, Mad Color Fiber Arts. Um, it's a nice little collection of vendors. Um, and there will be fiber and yarn and I don't know I know that hotels aren't available where the event is taking place in the um what is it a Hilton I think so um but there may be openings at bed and breakfast and hotels in the area if you're still interested in attending it they do a big um sit spin in in the um there's like a, an events room next door in this building to the hotel and they stay there and in a big group and spin and talk until late in the night. It's a lot of fun. You can get spa treatments at the hotel and it's meant to be a fun girls weekend. I am probably just going up for the day with a few friends. Hopefully Sheila will be Hopefully, one of those we'll friends, see. but if not, I still have, I have a couple of other people who are going with me. So, um, if you're going to be up there, let me know and we'll try to meet up before I go home. And I'll give you a button. We still have some um, yeah, we do. buttons left. And that would be really fun to say hello to people. And I think, is there anything else that you have gossip in innuendo? Any industry gossip? I'm trying to think. Um, I haven't been online too much lately. Um, because of my school taking us all the way up till basically this week, it's yeah, been, she's been a busy. rush on Christmas stuff. I went, <laughs> here's went out yesterday. So Max's birthday was yesterday, and I hadn't made the cake yet. So I went to stop making it after they left for school. I needed three eggs. I only had two. So I was going to go out and get some. And Cam's like, well, let's just go and do this and do that. Come back at 2 o'clock. I'm like, I have till 4 to get everything at 2.30. I have till 4 to get everything done because Max had soccer and, God forbid, can't take him. Which is fine. He you know, it's not like he's sitting well, around all day on vacation. He, oh, wait. He is. He grilled the steak, so I can't complain wow. on that. Well, I'd rather have him do it than me sit outside and grill it. Um, but so I had to get all the mashed potatoes, carrots, and the cake ready before we went off to soccer. I have no words. <laughs> I know. My husband all of a sudden has become... A jerk? Oh, no. no. Sorry. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> old-fashioned, I guess, is probably the way of it. Well, if he's really old-fashioned, then you should be at home barefoot in the kitchen making his meals. Unfortunately, he doesn't have enough money for us to be... Then he better, better <laughs> shut his mouth. I know. Just tell him, shut it. Or get to shut it. Yeah. And he works on hours. He wouldn't be able. I think you ought to tell him that he is not um, supporting you in the in the manner to which you should be accustomed. <laughs> We've never been supported in the manner to which I wish I was accustomed to. <laughs> oh no, he's been supporting know. me in the manner that I've been accustomed you to, know, paycheck been, to paycheck. I've been watching this show called The Amish Mafia. Oh, yeah, okay. Which may or may not be real. I don't think that's real. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be real. we saw the reviews for that. My husband and I looked at each other and were like, what? <laughs> they are talking, um, like Pennsylvania Dutch, they are talking in the Amish language. So I think the people in it are probably Amish. But I don't really know if there's an Amish Mafia. But I was thinking we ought to have a Knitter's Mafia. <laughs> and then, like, a group of the Knitter's Mafia could go over and, like, bust your husband's knees caps until he, he shapes up. Poke him with our needles. So tell your husband he better watch it or the Knitter's Mafia is going to come yeah. after him. We take care of our own. That's funny. 
I don't know. He's yeah. We need to have a sit down and yes, you do a reality chat because him. Well, actually, if well, I, I can tell you what will happen if I get this job. He'll get up with the boys. Uh, Zachary gets on the bus at seven thirty, and he'll go back to bed till nine. Must be nice. I'll be getting up at four. Or 3.30, depending on how much The good news is the traffic to the South Shore won't be bad at that time of day. (laughs) Because that's what the South Shore is like. Well, because there's two ways to get there. You either go through Boston, or you go around Boston. Also bad. It's it's like six and one half dozen in the other, (laughs) depending on the traffic. If you go through Boston when there is no traffic, it's it's a breeze. Yeah. But, um, But, you know, we don't usually go there below... Boston. We used to. My brother used to live down there. Well, that's area, when you have. I I used to work. I used to work in Bridgewater, south of. Oh south Shore. my God! Where I were know. you living at that time? Somerville. Oh my God! <laughs> I had a three-hour-a-day commute. <laughs> that was oh my so God! Bad. <laughs> we tried to buy a house down there, but I just couldn't do it because it was the South Shore, and I'm a North Shore person. Yeah, there was a time when we almost bought a house. No, we almost moved to Long Meadow. Because that's where Cam's mom lived at yeah. the time. Yeah. See, I could do Western Mass, but something about the South Shore Well, it was Shores during the time when my mom wrong. only had probably less than a year to live. We knew. Yeah. We knew that wasn't going to last long. But it worked out better this way anyways. And it was kind of funny because, side note, we have a friend who's in the military and he should be retiring within a couple of years. He wants to retire up to the north. His wife wants to stay southern because it's warmer. And Kim, my husband's like, yeah, but all his friends are mostly up here. He talks to him online. They play games online. This is a college roommate, a uh, really good friend of ours. And, uh, and I'm just listening to him. He goes, all of his friends are up here and he'd be so much happier here. And I'm just listening because... About three or so years ago, Kim was my husband was so adamant about moving back to Calif- moving to California, not back to California, moving to California that I was in tears because that would be taking my son away from a hospital that he really needed to be near. And that he's been at <clears throat> since he was a baby. Taking me away from my family and putting him with his, which would be his mother and his brother, really. That would be it, because you know, and in his extended family, but no friends. Right. Uh, it would be taking me away from my friends, and I'm listening to him, and I'm like. Do you not realize what you're saying? I mean, moving to California is not an issue anymore because after he suggested that, we had a couple of scares with Zachary, and then he ended up having another transplant. So he's pretty much set on the fact that he's staying here. And he needs to be in this area. Right. I mean, he's healthy now, but he still needs to be in this It's just really good to be around the team of people that have known him since he was a baby. Right. Rather than going somewhere and right. having his to surgeon start from when scratch. he went in for his second transplant, his surgeon was the one who did the first Same one. Surgeon. Knew you know, basically knew what he did. Most I mean the, you could probably find it out, but still he knew. Most that, of the team right? that does his care have known him since, since day one. Day almost. one. And I, that you can't beat that. But Plus, just listening is, to him talk about his friend Jamie moving back up here and I'm like, Oh my god, are you even listening to yourself? Because <laughs> No. You're talking about yourself a few years ago. He's going to get a visit from the Knitter's Mafia. That's yeah, all I'm he may need it. What would we do? We wouldn't really do cement shoes. He's <laughs> because... not because he is the primary uh, income person. He yeah. does have a nice life, nice life insurance. How much is that policy? <laughs> he was up on uh, cutting down some tree limbs a couple of years ago, and I said, you have a life insurance policy. I'll pay it up, right? And I said to him, I said, if you're going to fall, make sure it's all the way. <laughs> don't do it half butt. I'm like, don't do it halfway, because I already have enough to take care of with Zachary. I don't need to be taking care of you. And he's looking at me like, are you for real? <laughs> Oh. I'm like, don't do it That's why I always tell my husband, if you're going to die in an accident, (laughs) can you do it while you're on business? Because we will get so much more insurance if you do. I'm sorry. You got to have priorities. You do. You do. (laughs) Yeah, you need to look into that policy. (laughs) And then then the Knitter Mafia will take care of it. You tell him. Tell him. Make sure that it looks like an accident, though, because... (laughs) Tell him that he, he's now known to the Knitter's Mafia. You better watch it. Yeah. <laughs> need to make a sure about that. <laughs> and on, on that note, everyone, have, All right. happy have holidays. Have a great holiday. We are Merry not going to be here next week. Happy New Year. Don't panic. <laughs> we are going to be back after the New Year's, but we are taking a well-deserved week off. So we can spend time with our family. Yes. And friends. Yes. 
So um, happy Hanukkah to anyone who's celebrating happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah. I'm not sure if happy it's Kwanzaa. Yet. Kwanzaa starts. I just found this out yesterday on the 26th and ends on January 1st. So if you celebrate Kwanzaa, happy Kwanzaa. And happy Festivus for the rest of us. Yep. And happy we didn't die in the apocalypse yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good, right? <laughs> if you don't see us next week or the week after, then you know what? You're not going to see that's, anyone. <laughs> that's what I should say. If, you know, if there is an apocalypse, we're probably not going to record. So, you know, keep that in mind. We will not be back after the first of the but year. But you know if what? If there is an apocalypse, we'll be warm. <laughs> We have apocalyptic skills. I can make sweaters from fluff. Yes. I can learn how to shear a sheep, I'm pretty sure. If there's any sheep left. Oh, that's <laughs> I Believe me, I have enough yarn and fiber upstairs in my house to last at least 15 years. <laughs> knitting day preppers. Tuesday preppers in the knit. The knitting if you've ever watched preppers. Tuesday preppers, sorry, we're going to hijack this. Have you ever watched it? It talks about how long you would survive after doomsday. <laughs> you have six months worth of this, this, and this. I'd say we easily have a year's worth of more. Food. I have like 15 years worth of yarn. I'm good. I got about a year, maybe. I'm good. You can have Problem some is, of mine. Most I will of share with you. Sock weight, but... We'll kill Cam. Eat his body for <laughs> meat. <laughs> That's what happens when you piss off the Knitter's Mafia. <laughs> he looks like he would be tasty. <laughs> All right. This has gone in a completely crazy direction, so I'm just going to end it now. Bye. Knit with heart, everybody. See you in the 2013. You're sick.